to be outside here. My favorite spaces are just the streets. I love just walking along the sidewalks downtown. There's people sitting outside and interacting. Some of the open spaces that we have around here. The river itself, to me, is a great public space. That is, that is just so great. <laughs> that is so great. <laughs> it's an exceptional city. It is one of the best small cities in America. It might be in the top three, in my view, and I've been almost everywhere. Fred Kent, our speaker tonight, is a leading authority on revitalizing city spaces and one of the foremost thinkers in livability, smart growth, and the future of the city. Uh, no one will agree with me, but I think the car has no future. When I talk around a lot, people will say, yeah, I hate getting in a car. You know, just riding around on a bicycle in Chattanooga is infinitely more interesting than being in a car and driving around Chattanooga. Whenever I go in, I take all these pictures of people using public spaces. I don't take pictures of buildings, I take pictures of people. And as soon as I get into a place that's comfortable, I absolutely know that I'm going to get amazing pictures of affection. Uh, this is kind of an unusual one, uh, but I kind of like it. Isn't there a drink called Sex on the Beach uh, or something like that? Well, this is Sex on the Bench. What is so interesting, this is in Paris, and this is an awesome bench. It goes all the way around. You can sit facing in or out. So there are one, two, three, four, five different ways that people are using it for their own territory. So this is about the most perfect bench that we have ever seen. And if you think about this in some of the places that we looked at today, uh, you would begin to see some amazing <laughs> things happen. And maybe you could even get to that level of affection. <laughs> Comfort and affection. That's a big, big, big idea. Placemaking is another big idea. Placemaking changes everything. We say when you focus on place, you do everything different. And that's true. And guess who knows more about that place than anyone? It's the people who live there. I think probably the most valuable work that Chattanooga has done is it's got a constituency, a culture of accepting these activities. And that's not easy to do. If you would please join me in wel welcoming our guest, Fred Kent. I'm really interested in your discussions as, you, as we go through this. The 70s, that was not a good decade for Americans. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just be blunt, it wasn't a good, a good decade, period. <laughs> In some ways, Chattanooga was the basket case of the South and has been on a long march since then, I would say, in many ways, to prove once again and continuously that we are a city that can come together. We don't go in telling them what they want their neighborhoods to look like. We say, what do you want? And let us help you make that happen. Our mission is to conserve land for people. Coolidge Park is maybe 80% there. That fountain is in the top five in the world of great fountains. Yeah, no, this is just so good. The carousel is fantastic. That place is almost there. It's just got to go the next step. Bluffview is probably your best destination. And you know that it's a personality of someone who is zealous that has made that work. There is something that happens when you become a zealous nut that transcends normal human beings. And, and this is a, a city of zealous nuts, that's absolutely for sure. And you've been doing it for a long time, but you need another generation of zealous nuts to sort of now take this to a higher level. So the challenge to you is, what are the 10 places in the downtown? What are the 10 places in each neighborhood? Uh, and how well do they work? What's going on is you've got some excellence, but that's not enough. You have to have a lot more than that. And it has to filter out into the communities, too. And that's where the challenge is, I think, is how do you, at the scale of neighborhoods, how do you create those, those special places? I think there's incredible potential for boldness in Chattanooga. I don't think that all of Chattanooga realizes that they still need to be bold. I, f I feel like maybe they, they reached a pinnacle and then they thought, we did a great job, 
we can stop now. And I think with the right sort of education and sort of marketing campaign, people will realize again that it's a continuing process and we have to continue to be bold. I think we've got to break through to the next level. I believe boldness has been become something that Chattanooga expects and uh, it, it's something that you'll see more of in the future. And I think we sort of reinvent ourselves every so many years and it's probably time to do that again. I think it's your responsibility to be excellent because if you're not excellent, you're mediocre and mediocrity is not acceptable. You see what this country has been defined about for too long is about fear about isolation and fear, the fear of being around people you're not comfortable with. And, you know, we've got to grow up. And growing up is feeling comfortable about, around all kinds of people. But we need comfortable places to do that. Something is really going on right now. And I think there is a phenomenal atmosphere for change right now that I haven't seen in those 37 years. And here in Chattanooga, it's absolutely clear that a lot of people have been standing up for a long time doing amazing things. It's got to go on because I think we're in an era where phenomenal change can take place of great significance. It's such a good time right now. I think this is the time.